Once upon a time, I used to hail taxis by standing in the snow and sticking my hand out. I watched movies by buying pirated DVDs, and I used the computer to transfer my music into a portable MP3 player. That sounds like ancient history, but really, it was just 10 years. The past decade has seen huge changes in China's tech landscape. It has seen everyone from tech-savvy urbanites to rural farmers embrace mobile payment and live streaming. It has also seen the country significantly tighten its control over the internet, denying those who expected it to bring more openness to China. The rapid development of technology has changed the lives of millions of Chinese people, like me. At the beginning of this decade, I didn't have a smartphone. I was in high school and was only allowed a Philips slider phone. I couldn't do much, but I missed the physical keyboard. Texting under my desk while keeping my eyes fixed on the teacher was easy back then. But some of my classmates had a different phone. The iPhone 4 came out in 2010 and was becoming more popular in China. As cool as it looked, I wasn't sure why I'd need a smartphone. Then WeChat happened. It was just like Tencent's addictive desktop messaging app QQ, except in your pocket. But even that wasn't a killer feature for me. I was amazed by voice messaging. Look, I was a high schooler in a small town watching the TV show Lost. For some reason, that show made me want a walkie-talkie. WeChat's voice messaging allowed me to do that, except over the internet, and that fascinated me. Still, it wasn't love at first sight. WeChat in 2011 was very different to WeChat in 2019. There wasn't as much to do, so people didn't spend hours in it like they do today. But it was definitely the beginning of my addiction to smartphones. Three years later, I was in college in Beijing when another technology blew me away. Instead of standing on the street and waving my arms at a taxi, I decided to use a new app called Didi. Instead of a grumpy driver in a smelly car, I was quickly greeted by a fancy BMW with free bottled water. And the whole thing was half the price of a regular taxi. Of course, things are a little different now. My experience was so good and so cheap because Didi was in the middle of a bitter battle with rivals, both local and foreign. Over time, the rides became more expensive and less comfortable as Didi became the dominant player, so powerful that Uber had to pull out of China. But it's still an indispensable tool, so much so that something I said on that first journey ended up being mostly true. My first DD trip was so exciting that I told my friend I'd never take a normal taxi again. But not every tech breakthrough was a success. Take virtual reality, for instance. Many call 2016 the first year of VR in China. Big companies all started getting involved, and VR experiences were popping up all over cities for regular people to try it. It felt like VR was everywhere. But I didn't try it until I heard that Google and Queen had teamed up for a VR version of Bohemian Rhapsody. I couldn't get my hands on the Google Cardboard headset, but I lived in China, so I found colognes online. In the end, I bought a VR kit for less than $3 on Taobao. I was almost in tears. An animated neon version of Freddie Mercury danced right in front of me with so many other details everywhere I looked. I watched it at least 10 times, and I forced my parents to watch it. All I could think was, if I can feel this way with $3 glasses, how amazing will VR be in the future? Of course, we know how that turned out. VR is proof that not every exciting tech trend becomes a normal part of life. For example, we're used to paying with our phones, but many are still hesitant about paying with their face. We want cars that drive themselves, but autonomous vehicles are still incredibly limited. And even though robots are now bringing food to our tables, humanoid robots are still creepy enough that it's hard to imagine ever using them. But if there's one thing I've learned, it's that the future can be hard to see. So much can change so quickly that what was once impossible becomes normal. I wonder if the person I was at the beginning of this decade could imagine the things that we have at the end of this decade. I used to struggle with transferring music from my computer to my MP3 player. The idea of streaming music services would have seemed like science fiction to my younger self. 
That constant drive to innovate is what makes technology so exciting. I look back on the last decade with amazement at how far we've come. I'll be even more amazed by how much will change by 2030.